All right, it's time to talk some Shakespeare with Julius Caesar. Yes, Julius Caesar. Hey everyone, it is Shannon, and I'm excited to be back again with another Shake Two video. With and this week, the the play in question up for debate. You know, <laughs> up for debate. Are we debating? Are we debating? What are we doing? <laughs> Anyway, the play that we're talking about is Julius Caesar, and Shakespeare was created and is hosted by Lukash Books, and I will put the link to his channel below. Um, the past couple weeks have been plays that I've already read, um, Romeo and Juliet and Richard III I've already read, and I think reviewed. I know I reviewed Richard III, I think. Last I will I will read it last um December. It's one of my favorites. It's one of my favorites. Uh but this week is Julius Caesar and I hadn't read that one, so I jumped back on the Shake Two train. I hope it's okay to jump on and off. Um I'm more than halfway through reading Shakespeare, so this has been so much fun to see so many other people that are reading Shakespeare too. Ah, uh, so great. It's so great. Um anyway, back to the play. Uh this one's a bit of a weird one because um I actually have seen a production of it. I saw well, I saw a film version in the nineteen fifties. Uh, Marlon Brando uh, version, and I think because when one of the times that I wanted to get into Shakespeare, uh, I, a big, a strong piece of advice people have is to watch a production first and then read it. Since then, I have decided that that's not my preferred way of doing stuff. I would rather read it and then watch it, or maybe listen to it and then watch it. It's not necessarily the best way to do it. I think everyone's got to find their own rhythm, but I enjoy trying to understand it from the text alone first and then going to see, like, and then seeing a production or listening to an audiobook um, because I think that can really cement the characters and there's so many different interpretations. Shakespeare has been done over and over and over again for 400 years, so obviously there's multiple interpretations. And then some stories I think usually do have the same, you know, punch of certain topics, through lines, that kind of stuff. And for this one, I'm actually really curious to see what people say this is about, what the theme is, what characters they liked, because I found it a little harder to access what was going on like at all. For the first two acts, I was very unclear as to what was happening and what people's motivations are. It felt clear. I mean, I'm going to talk very specifically about plot points. So this is spoilery for um, Julius Caesar. Uh, so the, but it's when it starts off, like it feel like, and also I would, I, this is like what I think happened. No, I'm totally sure happened. I haven't watched another production of it yet. So it it's like people, or especially Cassia, is trying to convince Brutus to betray Caesar. And then there's, there's this conspiracy um, to and a plot against him. I should have brought my character card. There's this, like, it's very clear they're, they're going to take down Shakespeare. Uh, not Shakespeare. I think I said Shakespeare. They're going to take down Caesar. Um, because even in the character list, it's like, you know, Julius Caesar. And then it's like Octavius Caesar, who's Caesar after Caesar. And, like, what happens after Caesar dies. And the conspirators and the conspirators' supporters. So the cast of characters lays it all out there that... You know, people are targeting Caesar. They're going to take him down. It's a conspiracy. <laughs> like, it's literally in the cast list. So, uh, like, you know, I knew that going in. So, but I could see, okay, Cassia especially is, is it, I felt like he was trying to convince Brutus. And I know one of the themes and one of the big lines of this play is A2 Brutus. And, and for me, I interpreted that as you too. Like, I felt like Caesar was surprised that he was surprised that Brutus betrayed him um, or joined the people that were betraying him. I was very unclear as to why they were conspiring against Caesar. Um, they kept on mentioning Pompey, but they never really... I couldn't find or I didn't interpret what it was about that. I could tell that that's what it was that turned people but I could not figure out why that was what it was. So I was missing that, so I'm going to be looking for that when I watch a film version. Um, and then, um, but then in like Act 3, I was like, oh my gosh, all of these amazing speeches, all of these amazing speeches, like from Act 3 through to the end of the play, like every time Brutus speaks, it's like, oh my goodness gracious, this is gorgeous. Like, it's not always something I would agree with, but it is amazing speeches. I think I highlighted like half of them. I was just like wow, wow, and wow, and wow again. So deep and eloquent and, and conflicted, and it made me really realize that this is one of the reasons why I like tragedies in terms of the Shakespearean plays. I like them a lot more than the comedies, because 
and I know it's just the ending that differentiates one from the other, but just in, in general, you know, is this going to make you laugh or is this going to like really make you wrestle with things? And I'm like, I like ones that make me wrestle with things. I like to laugh too. Don't get me wrong. But it's like, you have these conflicted characters, thing, pe characters that have done things that are wrong, that are trying to redeem themselves, that they have to stand up for themselves or admit that what they did was wrong or are they going to flee? Are they going to hide? You get to see people's true colors when when the the cavil comes down or whatever like when the when the swords like you know come out what are they going to do and it shows who they are as a character and i love that and that is something that i think happens in tra in tragedies more than in comedies because you're in these intense conflict situations where the stakes are high and what are you going to do? Are you going to do anything? Are you are you going to switch sides? Are you going to admit defeat? Are you going to run away? Are you going to stand and fight? Are you going to stand and fight for what's right? Um, like, you know, who are you going to support? Like, all these are great questions. They're great questions. And I did not know the answers to most of them, to be quite honest, <laughs> because I couldn't figure out, <laughs> like, there's like, you know, the death, of, like, kill, they kill Caesar, there's this funeral, which is a great scene, like, best scene, and it reminded me, if you haven't seen it, go watch this, the Mark Antony speech by Damian Lewis, I will put it in the cards, I will put it in the cards, I have watched it so many times, and I watched it before, like, I watched it a couple years ago, my sister posted it on Facebook, because the acting is spectacular, you actually, the acting is so good, you do not need the context, but when you have the context, oh my gosh, it is so beautiful, so I highly recommend checking that out. He's such a wonderful actor. He's um, uh, from Homeland. <sighs> so good. Anyway, so, and that's the big um, friends, nobles, countrymen speech. And when that happened, that's when I started to really get into the play and really started to understand what was going on a little bit better. And then throughout the second part of the play, it's really weird because there's lots of fighting. And one of the things I think that's funny about Shakespeare is that you see lots of fighting and when you see... Um, like a theater production is, is very, you know, um, you know, stage fighting. But then when you see a film version, they're usually like these big battles. So I'm really curious to see how they're going to approach this, um, either in the, in the Marlon Brando version, which I've already seen and totally forgot. There's also a Charlton Heston version from the 70s. Anyone seen that? <laughs> I don't know whether I should try and wrestle that one out. The Marlon Brando version is available on Hoopla, at least the Hoopla that's connected to the Toronto Public Library. Um... I think what everyone has access to is a bit different and the mediums people have access to on Hoopla is a bit different. I'll, I'll put what Hoopla is down below. It's basically a electronic lending um, service, but you have to connect to it through your library. It's fabulous. It's absolutely fabulous. And there is an app so I can watch, I'll, I'll, I can watch stuff on my TV if it's a video or listen to music on the TV. Anyway, back to, back to where I was. So yeah, so they can often have these big battles, but in the play, it's mostly talking and then, you know, fight someone dies like so i'm really curious to see how it feels but this one's way more speechy when it gets to the battles and you have like you know mark antony making a speech and like you know there's lots of brutus's speeches and lots of stuff between brutus and cassia and i couldn't really understand what was going on there so if anyone has really like i would love to hear people's opinions on what it was because for, for me it really felt like cassia was trying to convince brutus to conspire against him and then he totally um, like, doesn't want to actually do anything and, and is a bit of a coward and just takes off. Um, and is that right? Like, that's what it felt like to me. And it reminded me a little bit of Coriolanus, which I think, I don't think we're, we're doing, I was going to say studying, we're doing in Shake Tube, um, which has a, a strong, I think a strong theme of like a war general who, you know, do, like, does the, like, does what needs to be done to, to, um, have the battles be successful and then there isn't really a place for him and I was trying to figure out if that's what's going on here and people felt that way about Caesar or whether it was something else because they had this whole theme of like after they killed them that like Rome was free and that they were freeing them from tyranny which I know Caesar is very connected to but I didn't see it in the play so are we supposed to come to the play with that knowledge I don't know I don't know overall I did enjoy it I felt like I didn't totally understand a lot of it that's not, that's, you know, that's okay. Um, I'm definitely, I don't mind that because I'm happy to 
watch different adaptations. I'm happy to rewatch it, to reread it later. I don't feel like you need to understand everything on the first go, especially not Shakespeare. So these are just sort of like my first impressions, you know? And um, yeah, I, but I did really enjoy it. It really made me really understand why I like tragedies um, and the speeches were so good, were so good. And so I'm definitely gonna check out the Marlon Brando version. Let me know, should I try the Charlton Heston one too? Is there another version of Julius Caesar that you recommend either in film I think there's some TV shows. I don't know. And I didn't know. Is it? I don't know how much they follow it in in Rome. It's not that. I guess I'm more interested in the Shakespearean play as opposed to the character because the character comes up in a whole whack ton of stuff. Um, so yeah, that was Julius Caesar. Um, I am looking forward to next week is Midsummer Night's Dream. This is a play that I have not read since high school. So and I haven't read it in terms of my Shakespeare project. So I'm definitely going to chime in for that one. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing what other people say about Julius Caesar. Let me know your thoughts down below if you're participating in Shakespeare. ShakeTube, and I will definitely check out your video. Um, this has been so much fun, and I can't wait for more. I don't have to wait. I can start anytime. <laughs> Thanks for watching.